The Norwegian government just opened up its seas for deep sea mining exploration. A lot of eco activists are very afraid of what's going to happen. And some investors are curious to see what can happen with deep sea mining in the future. We're going to talk about why it's so important, why people are worried and why people want to deep sea mine. We're going to talk about what opening up the waters for deep sea mining exploration actually means. And we're going to find out if we're on the verge of really starting to mine the deep sea, which we know virtually nothing about. That's on this episode of Ocean Talk. Let's get started. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Ocean Talk. My name is Andrew Liu, and I'm your host. I'm a marine biologist and a science communicator, and I'm here to tell you what's happening in the ocean, how you can speak up for the ocean, and what you can do to live for a better ocean by taking action. Today, we're going to the Norwegian waters, the cool, beautiful Norwegian waters, and we're going to be talking about deep sea mining because the Norwegian government just voted to open up exploration to deep sea mine. This is something that boggles a lot of people's minds, uh, and they're trying to figure out why this is happening so quickly when we don't really know much about the deep sea and the ramifications that can happen if we start playing around and start extracting things from the deep sea. So here's the skinny on what's happening with the whole vote and what they're doing. The Conservative Party of Norway, which is the government that's in power in Norway, put out a press release and they talked about how deep sea mining is a promising industry. Quote, extraction of seabed minerals is a very promising industry, which we believe can create great value and jobs in Norway in the future. In order to achieve this, it is important that we make it possible for companies to invest in the Norwegian continental shelf. End of quote. Now, this is, you know, it, it's, it's an interesting thing to say the least. You're looking at an opportunity to make money, bring in investment. This is important for governments, especially in today's economy, when we see inflation going crazy and really messing up the economy. Having something new in the economy could be great for the Norwegian government. However, they're first at trying deep sea mining in a larger scale. So what could that bring? We don't really know. Some activists and politicians warn of the potential danger of what could happen to the deep sea mine. And a Barron's observer via email at Amanda Louis Helly, a Greenpeace activist says, quote, it is devastating to see the Norwegian state putting the amazing ecosystems of the sea at risk. The area is one of the last safe havens for Arctic marine life. We will do what we can to stop the destructive industry before it starts. End of quotes. Here's the situation. We're looking at a deep sea environment, which we know very little about. We're also looking at a marine ecosystem that's in the Arctic, which we know very little about. You got to remember the Arctic was covered by ice for as long as we know it until the last few decades. We we're just starting to explore the marine system in, in the Arctic and understanding what the Arctic brings and how important the Arctic is and, and all those changes, what's happening to the marine life that's happening around there. We're seeing, you know, whales that aren't being able to feed on the krill because there's not enough algae and phytoplankton underneath the sea ice because there's no sea ice. And so we're starting to see those animals, those indicator animals, those indicator species, you know, lose their body mass, lose their health, and just sort of die down in numbers because of the change happening in the Arctic seas in general. So just imagine what the damage that we could do if we start exploring in an ocean where we know very little about, we know very little about the deep sea environment and what that can do to our regular ocean cycles of what's happening, you know, in the ocean currently that we do not have that understanding, right? There have been some studies around the world in smaller spots and just sort of like smaller sections of, you know, the Pacific Ocean, the Atlantic Oceans and so forth, where we've done some deep sea exploration and we've seen a lot of diversity in worms in different types of animals, you know, feathered filter feeders and functional animals like that. And we just, we, we're just scratching the surface in this kind of knowledge. And unfortunately, this deep sea mining seems to be pushing forward a lot faster than we think as climate change is getting worse. We know this summer was a devastating summer for a lot of places. In North America, we saw fires for forests in like every spot of North America. The Canadian Boreal Forest was basically on fire from Halifax all the way to the Northwest Territories and the Yukon. And it was devastating all along the, all along the BC coast. It was devastating for a lot of people. A lot of people lost their homes. A lot of people, you know, some people perished, unfortunately. And it's just, you know, what it did to the climate didn't help. And so there's that push to move forward and push more uh, of these types of minerals to come out that can help the renewable energy sector. And this is what's interesting is 
we have climate change, which is causing a lot of problems. We know that. And then so you have the solution or one of the solutions is to move towards more renewable energy and renewable systems such as electric vehicles and, you know, better batteries and so forth. Well, the batteries for those electric vehicles require different types of minerals, cobalt, copper, zinc. These these types of minerals are not easy to find around the world. Currently, we're using them in the Republic of Congo. This is a a big, big problem within there because there's a lot of human rights violations with a lot of these mines. There's reports and videos of child labor, uh, you know, people just dying by the minute. And so there's more pressure just from that and climate change to get more, you know, more of these metals for these batteries. Now, with that said, they're on the other side of it. The batteries for these electric vehicles are getting in Norway in these in these areas for deep sea mining exploration is that deep sea mining won't actually happen we're just going to have a lot more leases that are going to be put out we're going to see a lot more exploration a lot more scientific studies and impact assessments to be conducted because that's what these companies are going to have to do these private companies are going to apply for leases they're going to get those leases and the government is going to mandate that they have to do these environmental impact assessments which means they have to go they might take some samples they might look and explore those oceans and find out what type of little nodules where they get the metals that they have to extract what type are, are down there where are they? How extravagant are these? And if you start taking them out, what's going to happen to the ocean? What type of diversity is there? What type of marine species are there? Do marine mammals go down that far? Are we seeing deep sea sharks? Are we seeing these diverse habitats? Are they going to be destroyed? What's going to happen to them? If they are destroyed, what's going to happen to the surrounding areas? And what's going to happen to the entire system if these areas are going to be you know, opened up for extraction? There are a lot of questions that still need to be answered. Really, the only way in, in reality is to get these companies to actually do these environmental assessments. Now, with that said, I'm not approving any of this. I am not in approval of deep sea mining because environmental assessments can be very subjective on depending who's doing it and who's approving it. A lot of the times when there's these environmental assessments, there's pressure for an industry to do these assessments to make sure they're not going to harm anything around there. But also there's pressure to get this stuff pushed through. And sometimes there are a lot of gaps in these assessments because what they'll do is they will look at an area that they don't know much about just like a deep sea area, right? They're gonna pick an environment, they're gonna explore a little bit, they're gonna map it, hopefully, and they're gonna find out what's there. But they're not gonna be able to take all the different types of information. That's gonna take years, maybe even decades to find out what's gonna happen in the effects of deep sea mining or even the potential effects of deep sea mining because it's so hard to get down there. Equipment's expensive. The equipment may not be up to par to work to be able to monitor these areas for the long term to get an actual realistic point of view and representation of how these systems function just on the regular basis, let alone function when there's some kind of extractive exercise going on. These environmental assessments may not be perfect. They never really are perfect, and we should be demanding perfection when it comes to mining the deep sea and extracting from the deep sea because we have no idea the role the deep sea plays maybe a little bit but not much of each area and the role it plays in supporting the rest of the ecosystem we don't know set off a, a series of effects that could you know just destroy some type of environment or could change the way we see the environment or we know the environment in that point in time. So we have to be extremely careful and these environmental assessments have to be perfect. Right now, they're not perfect. And that's the danger that we see when we start to explore these areas that we don't know much about. In summary, this is what's happened. Yes, the Norwegian government opened up exploration for deep sea mining. No, deep sea mining is not going to happen right away. There are going to be people representing these companies. They're going to apply for leases. 
They're going to get those leases. They're going to have to do a series of environmental assessments that will be given to the government. The government's going to make the decision on whether or not then this type of extractive activity could happen. It probably won't happen until minimum 2030, but you never know with the pressure that's happening. This summer at the UN meeting at the, of the International Seabed Authority, there was a vote on whether they should continue the temporary ban on deep sea mining. Most countries voted for the ban. Some countries like China and Norway voted against the ban. So there are countries who are going to be exploring their waters. They're going to, there's going to be a vote on international deep sea mining as well and exploration for deep sea mining in an upcoming meeting this year in 2024. And then the final vote to approve all these regulations and to finally come up with a decision on whether there's going to be deep sea mining going forward will happen in 2025 probably we never know there could be a delay you just never know what's going to happen at these meetings it seems like every time we go in understanding what these meetings are going to be about they come out with a different solution we'll see what happens but no deep sea mining is not going to happen yes it's being opened up for exploration but it's not going to happen right away this is still dangerous we still have to be careful what we're going to be doing to the deep sea and how we're going to go forward with deep sea mining on the other side the batteries are getting better there's going to be less dependence on minerals that are going to be extracted from the deep sea for these, as well as from, you know, landmines where we see, you know, cobalt and all these different metals, copper, zinc being extracted that are, you know, there's a lot of human rights violations, as I mentioned. So there's still problems with, with the EV industry in the creation. It's not perfect by any means. Hopefully we'll get to a point where we don't rely on anything like that, but we can still get the benefits of the electric vehicles. That I want to bring you this information. It's still a little confusing and up in the air what's going to happen. It really depends on the amount of investment that's going to happen. And there are some players who want to invest big time in this industry. It'll be interesting to see how long we'll need to depend on the industry and how long it's going to take even before we can actually use the minerals from the extraction. You know, there have been reports that it won't happen until about 2050. We'll see what happens on there, but I would love to hear your thoughts. Do you think we should go ahead with deep sea mining exploration, not necessarily deep sea mining, to find out what's going to happen to the deep sea? It is... On the other hand, it is an option to find out more about the deep sea when you have people with a lot of money, more than universities, more than... Of course, please subscribe, hit that notification bell so you can know when I drop each and every one of these episodes. I'll try and drop about two or three a week, uh, but I'd love to hear your thoughts on this and subscribe for more episodes. Thank you so much. I am your host, Andrew Lewin. This has been Ocean Talk. Have a great day. We'll talk to you next time and happy conservation.